Dear students, in this module, I will introduce open reading frames and the associated concepts to you for the conversion of an RNA sequence into a protein. As you know, codons of three nucleotides, they code for each amino acid, and there are multiple amino acids that form the proteins. There is one start codon and three stop codons that you make use during this conversion process. And the most important thing that we're going to talk about today is how to search for the start and the stop codons. So this is a very interesting question because this will totally change your protein if you have a different start codon or a different stop codon. For that, the concept of open reading frames needs to be introduced. As you can see in this figure, we have the DNA sequences provided here in the middle of the figure. You can note that the 5 prime to 3 prime direction on the upper strand and the 3 prime to 5 prime on the lower strand. So the lower strand is obviously complementary to the upper strand. Now, to move towards the open reading frames, so just consider the 5 prime to the 3 prime strand. If you have this strand with you and its sequence, then you can have three possible open reading frames. Why three? So because each codon is comprised of three nucleotides, so either the beginning of this sequence can be the first, the second, or the third nucleotide. So depending upon which nucleotide you start from, you have three different options. If you start from the first nucleotide and form a codon comprising of 1, 2, and 3, then you have the first start codon. But if you choose to form the codon by looking at the second nucleotide, then you will need to have second, third, and the fourth nucleotide which will form the first codon. You also have a third option. You may choose to start coding your protein from the third nucleotide. In that case, you will have 3, 4, and 5 as the first codon. So therefore, you have three options for encoding the first start codon. Why not four? Because if you have the 6 nucleotide here, then essentially you are saying that 4th, 5th and 6th nucleotide will form the start codon. But that would mean that the first codon can also be 1, 2 and 3. So therefore, you can have a maximum of 3 possible positions for starting the start codon. You remember I talked about the complementary stand that is given here. So similarly, you can have three different start positions for the complementary stand as well. So this would mean you have three positions to start from, three possible positions to start from in the 5 prime to 3 prime sequence and three possible positions to start from the 3 prime to 5 prime positions. So in all, you have a total of six possibilities. Now, out of this six possible starting nucleotides, which one is valid? So the rule of thumb is the longest ORF is valid. In, the, in this example, the longest ORF is denoted by the red here. So your ORF number one is the longest. Therefore, we will use this to form the protein sequence. This is the rule of thumb which you can remember and you can apply towards encoding your proteins. One can always find web resources 
for finding the ORF. Instead of doing protein encoding by looking at each individual nucleotide, you can simply paste your sequence at the NCBI's ORF finder and it will give you the longest possible ORF that exists within your nucleotide sequence. So this will surely simplify your problem. In conclusion, there are six ORFs that are possible for any nucleotide sequence and you can need you need to find out which ORF is the valid one. Rule of thumb is that the longest ORF is the one that you have to work with. And of course, the first stop codon that comes once you enter the reading frame will mark the end of your protein.